Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> now, before we define what we call definite integral, so we said a definite integral is an integral of this form where we have a to b f of x dx. Now, all problems we treated before, we have finite numbers for, for the interval given. Also, all problems we treated before, we assume that this kind of function here are continuous functions. Why? Because we need to use the tool which is called fundamental theorem of calculus to calculate. So, the question is now the following. What happened if this interval is not finite, meaning maybe this is minus infinity, or this one is infinity, or both minus infinity and infinity. This is one thing. The second one. What happened if this function has an infinite discontinuity? In this case, the definite integral will be called improper integral. So let's define it now. The improper integrals, what do you mean by improper integrals? The definition says, a definite integral of this form is called improper if we have one of two, two things will happen here. If either the interval itself is infinite, meaning, a could be minus infinity, or B can be infinity, or both. This is minus infinity, and this is infinity. This is called the first type of improper integral. The second one. If this is happening, we call it improper integral. If the second one, or if the function now, f of x, if the integrand has infinite discontinuity. So, simply we say we have two cases, two types of improper integrals. The first one, if the problem is appearing because of the interval, we have infinite interval. The second one, if the function has infinite discontinuity. So we will summarize now two cases we have. We will treat today the first case, which is improper integrals of type 1. What do we mean by improper integrals of type 1? Okay, so in the first part of the talk, we will treat only the first type of the improper integrals. We said improper integral times one, if we have infinite interval, infinite interval we have. A, B is not finite. A, B is not finite, meaning one of these two ponder points is infinite or both of them minus infinity and infinity. So how to define improper integral in this case? They said, if we assume that the integral from A to T, F of T, DX exists for every T greater than or equal to A, then, we will define it this way. We say a to infinity f of x dx is equal to the limit as t goes to infinity, a to t f of x dx. Let me show you how to deal with infinity in general. What we are trying to do, just to motivate the idea. Assume we have, like what we, what we have here is just the x, y coordinate. Assume we have a function, any function, let us say, for instance, y 1 over x or 1 over x squared, something like this, okay? Coming downstairs like this. And assume someone is interested to find the area between 1 and so on. So this area here. So as an example now, how to get the area from our previous discussion, we said the area under the curve will be just, uh, I mean, the integral from 1 to infinity, in that case, 1 over x squared dx. Someone will say how to calculate this because we did not treat before what's happening if we have infinity. Now, what is the idea to deal with infinity? What we are doing here, the definition says, what do you need to do? You have problem here, isn't it? So what should we do? We remove infinity and we stop at a point here, we call it t. This is a, a variable, okay? So instead of integrating from one to infinity, we will integrate from one to t and that is possible. We just integrate from one to t and this is 1 over x squared dx. Of course, we will get the answer. If we call it the area, we call it a of t because the answer will be in terms of what? In terms of t. Then, what you need to do, we need to push this t to go to infinity and see what's happening to this expression here. Okay, we have two possibilities. After calculating, the limit of this could exist and could does not exist. In each case, what do you say? And the definition says, okay, this is equal to this, provided that the limit exists. Meaning, after calculating the integral, you end up with an expression of t, take the limit as t goes to infinity. If the limit exists, then we say this integral equal to the value of that limit. Okay. If the limit exists, 
we simply say that the integral is convergent. If the limit does not exist, that's the meaning of otherwise here. Otherwise, we say the integral is divergent. That is, if we have infinity appearing in the one of the endpoints. Similarly, if you have minus infinity, what you need to do simply is to remove minus infinity and insert t. Then calculate from t to b f of x dx. Then the result here, you need to study it. What's happening if you push t to go to what? Minus infinity. In that case, you have two cases again. Either the limit exists or does not exist. If the limit exists, we say that this integral is convergent to the limit. If the limit does not exist, we say this integral is divergent. That is the second case of the first type of improver integral. The third case we have, you may encounter an example where you need to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. What you need to do, just split it into two integrals, minus infinity to a, a to infinity, then discuss the convergence of the first one, discuss the convergence of the second one. If both of them convergent, then this integral is convergent. If one of these two integrals divergent, then we say this one is all divergent. It's also divergent. How to use this definition to solve improper integrals of type one? That will be our next point. Okay, let us see how to apply the definition now. We have the example we wrote, that is, determine whether the improper integral one to infinity, one over x squared dx, is convergent or divergent. Clearly here we have the first type of improper integral because we have infinities appearing in the upper limit of the integral. Okay, geometrically what does it mean? We are looking for this area here. We are looking for the area under the curve y equal to x squared. Okay, starting from, okay, x equal to one. This is what we have, x axis and y axis. We are interesting to see if this area is finite or not. This is what we are trying to investigate. So how to solve this one? Now, according to the definition, we say, okay, one to infinity, one over x squared dx. Now what you need to do, we need to remove the infinity, okay, and study. Of course, I need to write here the limit as what? T goes to infinity. I'm replacing infinity by T, so I'm considering one to T. And that is, of course, x to the power minus two, if you like, dx. I'm just writing one over x squared as x to the power minus two. Provided that limit exists. So, formally we will write it this way, keeping in mind if this limit exists, we say this is convergent. Otherwise, at the end, if we find that this limit does not exist, or, I mean, infinity, then we say the integral is diversion. Okay, to be accurate enough, we're supposed not to write this way. We're supposed to start with the limit and investigate first. If it is, uh, I mean, exists, then we say the integral is convergent. If it does not exist, we say this is divergent. But formally, we start by writing equal, keeping in mind that uh, if the limit exists. If not, then we say simply that the integral is divergent. So let us do that and see if the limit exists or not exists. We need to find the limit as t goes to infinity. What is the integral of this? Simply it is minus one over x, evaluating from one to t, okay? So this is equal to the limit as t goes to infinity. This is what we have. Then if you replace t here, you have minus one over t, minus minus one, that is plus one, okay? This is what we have as minus one over x evaluated from one to t. Okay, now what's happening as t goes to infinity? This is equal to zero because you have minus one over something goes to infinity, this goes to zero. And the limit of one is equal to what? Is equal to one. So what can we say about the integral now? Since the limit exists as a finite number, then this integral, so this integral from one to infinity one over x squared dx, we say, is convergent. Okay. We say it's convergent to one, or it's convergent and the value of it is equal to one. Okay, simply I will say it's convergent and the integral from one to infinity, one over x squared 
dx is equal to 1. So simply you can say it's convergent to 1 or the value of it is equal to 1 because the limit exists. So this is convergent and the value is equal to the value of the limit. Okay, 1 over x squared. We'll do slight modification on it and see what will happen if we call this one, for example, we call this one part A and let's look for part B. Part B, I will change the function instead of 1 over x squared, I will just write it 1 over x. So I am investigate, investigating this integral from 1, the same problem, 1 to infinity, 1 over x dx. Is it convergent or divergent? Is this improper integral is convergent and divergent? Why we call it improper integral? Because we have again infinity here. So is it convergent or divergent? Okay. We apply the definition now. So we're supposed to investigate the limit. So formally, we will write 1 to infinity, 1 over x dx, supposed to be equal to the limit as what? t goes to infinity. We are replacing t infinity by t. And then integrating from 1 to t, 1 over x dx, whatever will be gained here will be studied as t goes to infinity if the limit exists. This integral is convergent. If the limit does not exist, we say this integral is divergent. Okay. So once we write this statement, we're supposed to understand here that there is a hidden statement here says if the limit exists. Okay. So what is it equal to? This will be the limit as t goes to infinity. And what is the integral of this? It is ln of, since we are talking about positive interval, so it is just ln of x. Otherwise, it is ln absolute value of x, actually. Ln absolute value of x because we have positive interval. So x is in a positive range. In that case, it is enough to write ln of x. And I will evaluate this one from 1 to t. Then I will study what's happening as t goes to infinity. So again, do we have t goes to infinity? I substitute now to get ln of t minus ln of 1. Okay, what is the limit of the logarithmic function as t goes to infinity, logarithmic function is an increasing function this way. So when you go to infinity, the function also goes to what? Go to plus infinity. So what can we say about the integral? We cannot say now the integral is infinite. So we say then this implies the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x dx is what? Is divergent. Okay, so this is one example where the integral is divergent, and this is another example where the integral is convergent, although the geometrical meaning is almost the same. This is the graph of 1 over x squared. Some, somehow you can graph 1 over x, and it will look like similar to this. I'm talking about the first portion of it. Otherwise, we have another one here. Okay, we are talking about from 1 to infinity. So if you graph 1 over x, you will find that almost they are of the same shape. But this is not a proof that uh, the, if they have the, almost the same shape, then the integral will be the same. For that one, we have convergent. For this one, we have divergent. Okay. Let us see more exercises about this, just to apply the definition of uh, improper integral. Another nice, interesting problem is this. Example that says, evaluate evaluate the integral from minus infinity to zero, and we have here x e to the x dx, I will say here if possible. Why if possible? Because not always possible to calculate the integrals, because uh, sometimes we have divergent integrals. So if the integral is convergent, find the value, otherwise say it is divergent. That's what it means if possible here. Okay, what is the problem now? We have very nice function here, continuous, everything is fine, but we have one point here of the boundary points is infinite, so this is minus infinity. What should we do? Simply, we remove minus infinity, we insert another parameter, we call it t, okay? And then, we evaluate the integral and push the t to go to minus infinity and investigate what's happening. That's what we will do here. So I will define minus infinity to 0. This is x e to the x dx, okay? I will define it to be equal to the limit as t goes to minus infinity, okay? And then I replace here minus infinity by t. 
I will put here 0, and this is x, e to the x, dx. Okay? Now, how to calculate the integral from t to 0, x, e to the x, dx? Clearly, we have integration pi part here. You may call this is u equal to x, and dv to be equal to e to the x, what? dx. You end up with du is equal to dx, and v will be equal to what? Will be equal to x. So what is the integral here? It is uv minus the integral of v du, so simply it is x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x, what? dx. That is our integral. Now let's borrow this one and write it there. Write it in the solution here. So what do we have? We will have the limit, okay? t goes to minus infinity. Now, what is the integral of x e to the x? It is x e to the x minus e to the x. So I will write it here, x e to the x minus e to the x, okay? Evaluated from t to 0. Okay, everything here should be evaluated from t to 0. Now, if you calculate, what do you get is the following. This will be equal to the limit. As t goes to minus infinity, now if you substitute 0, this is 0. This is minus 1. Then we have minus sign in the formula. I substitute here to get t e to the power t, and that is plus e to the power t. It's supposed to be minus minus, but we have a minus sign here, so that will be the answer. Now, let's look what's happening for this expression as t goes to minus infinity. Okay. I will say this is equal to minus 1. Why it's equal to minus 1? Let us see this. Now, as t goes to minus infinity, clearly, this one goes to what? This one goes to 0. Why? Because I have e to the power minus infinity. That is 1 over e to the infinity. I mean, talking about limit case. So this goes to 0. Clearly, e to the t, e to the t, e to the t is the exponential function like this. If you go to minus infinity, the function is approaching 0. That's one thing. For the constant, it is equal to minus 1 because it is constant. But what about this one? Minus t e to the power t. I will say this goes to 0. The question, why? I justify it now. What it remains now to show is the limit of this expression is going to 0 as t goes to minus infinity. Let us see why is this. OK, I'm considering now the limit as t goes to minus infinity, what do we have here is minus t minus t e to the power t. Fine. Now, if you just let t goes to minus infinity, this is quantity goes to what? Infinity times. And if you just let t goes to minus infinity, the other one goes to what? Zero. So it is infinity times zero type of the orbitals one of the indeterminate forms we have. So we need to use Hubital's rule to find the answer. Okay, we have, if you remember, 0 over 0, 0 over 0, infinity times 0, we have infinity over infinity, 1 to the infinity, etc. 0 to the power 0, and etc. This is one of them. How to treat this case? So what I will do here, I will say this is equal to, first, we need to bring it back to what? To either infinity over infinity or 0 over 0. What I will do here, I will write this one as minus t divided by, it's supposed to be 1 over e to the t, that is e to the power minus t. That's exactly what we need to do as a modification of the problem. Now, as t goes to minus infinity, this goes to infinity, and this goes to infinity, so it is infinity over infinity time. Now, we can use what we call Hopital's rule to find the answer. Hopital's rule, I would say HR4 stands for Hopital's rule to get this limit as t goes to minus infinity. This is what we have. Okay, differentiating this, you get what? You get minus 1. Differentiating this, you get minus e to the power minus t. Again, now just divide minus with the minus. So what do you get is this. As t goes to minus infinity, this goes to infinity. e to the infinity goes to infinity. 1 over infinity goes to what? goes to 0. And that shows that we have the limit of this expression goes to 0. Of course, this goes to 0, so the final answer goes to minus 1. Now, what can we say about this integral? We say simply, since the limit exists, we say that this integral is 
convergent to minus one. So that is the end, that's the conclusion. This implies our integral from minus infinity to zero x e to the x dx is, I will say, convergent to zero. To minus one, sorry. Convergent to minus one, because the final answer is minus one for the limit, so the integral is convergent. We will see another exercise where we have the problem is appearing in both cases, minus infinity and infinity. How to treat these kind of problems? Okay. That will be our next point. So let us come to the third part of the first type of improper integral where we, where we have minus infinity and infinity. Okay, what should we do in this case? We just simply divide this one into two parts. So I will investigate this first, one plus x squared, dx, what I need to do is just to split it into two parts. I will consider minus infinity to zero, one over one plus x squared, dx plus the integral of, okay, zero to infinity of one over one plus x squared dx. I will not say plus unless that this is convergent and this is convergent. If both convergent, then we can say like this, okay? If one of them is divergent, then we will say the integral is divergent. So what I will write instead, I will say, I will study first the two things here we have. So I will say, consider these two integrals. Consider the following integrals. The first one is minus infinity to zero, one over one plus x squared dx. And the second integral here is zero to infinity, of course, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, and does it make a difference here? If you choose 0, you choose 1, you choose 2, whatever you like to choose here, it's not a problem. But 0 here is simple things to be, and it is inside the domain, we have no problem, so I can choose 0 to be the point where we need to split the integral. Okay. If you allow me, I will call this one i1 here, and call this one i2. What I need to do now, I need to study the convergence of i1, and the convergence of I2. If I find that both of them are convergent, my original integral is also convergent. Okay, otherwise it is divergent. So let us do the first one, minus infinity to zero, okay, one over one plus x squared dx. By definition, this is supposed to be equal to the limit as t goes to, we remove the singularity here, which is, I mean, the problem here, minus infinity, and we put a t, so this is, as t goes to minus infinity, we have t to what? To zero, and we have one over one plus x squared dx, okay? So what we are doing now, we are removing the minus infinity, we put a t, then we integrate, this will be, a, I mean, an expression of t, then we push t goes to minus infinity and see if it is convergent or divergent, or if the limit exists or does not exist. What is it equal to? This is the limit as t goes to minus infinity, okay? What is the integral of this? It is tangent inverse, tangent inverse of x evaluated from t to what? To zero. Okay, so what is next then? This will be equal to the limit of the expression as t goes to minus infinity. What is that expression? It is tangent inverse of zero, which is zero. So it is minus tangent inverse of minus tangent inverse of t. And if you calculate as t goes to minus infinity, tangent inverse goes to minus pi over 2. You see, tangent inverse function is something like this. You have a horizontal asymptote here. Of course, this is x, y coordinate, and this is y equal to pi over 2. And if you just draw this one, this is y equal to minus pi over 2. And tangent inverse function is an increasing function. This is not accurate, but this is the typical shape of what tangent inverse. So as you go to minus infinity, the function is approaching minus pi over two. And we have a minus sign here. Of course, this is what? This is tangent inverse. This is, just to make it clear for you, this is tangent inverse here. Okay, so the final answer is pi over two. This quantity goes to minus pi over two with a minus sign, so the final answer is pi over two. So what can we say about the I1? This implies 
the first integral which is called i1 which is what minus infinity to 0 and that is 1 over i1 which is equal to this 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is what convergent okay this is convergent fine what about the second one what about the second one we study the second one now now we study the second one so consider this consider this one which is the integral from 0 to infinity 0 to infinity 1 over 1 plus x squared dx by definition this is equal to the limit as t goes to infinity the limit as t goes in because we remove the infinity and insert t instead so this is t and then we have 1 over 1 plus x squared dx okay again what is the integral of that one it is just tangent inverse of x so t goes to infinity and we have tangent inverse tangent inverse of x okay evaluated from 0 to t that is simply the limit as t goes to infinity of tangent inverse of t as we said we are writing the first line keeping in mind that if this limit exists if the limit does not exist simply we refer back to the question and say this integral is divergent okay what is the answer as t goes to infinity of tangent inverse if you go to infinity the answer is pi over 2 now what can we say about the second integral this implies i2 is also what convergent okay good the question what can we say about the integral now we have the integral we have is convergent one second one the value of this is the sum of the two values pi over 2 plus pi over 2 which is equal to pi so let me write the conclusion for you now the conclusion we say since since i1 and i2 are convergent since these two are convergent this implies our i which is equal to minus infinity to infinity 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is convergent not only this and our integral is equal to i1 plus i2 which is equal to pi over 2 plus pi over 2 that is equal to pi okay now we will study a very interesting question about uh, the first type of improper integral that will be used for our later study in series one of the very important questions we have here or idea we have here is the following exercise that will be used as we said for testing series for convergence and divergence so this will be of a great help there if we study convergence and divergence of series we will use always not always in some of the questions we have the following exercise will be of interest what is the exercise we have here the next exercise says for what values for what values of the parameter p is this integral from 1 to infinity 1 over x to the p dx convergent so we need to find all values of p where this is convergent and of course we need to find all values of p that this integral is not convergent or divergent okay now this is one of the first type of improper integral where we have the upper limit is infinity so what should we do to find the answer okay i will just write one to infinity one over x to the power p one over x to the power p dx i will just rewrite it as it is the limit i remove infinity so i will write here from one to t and this is one over x to the power p dx 
and of course here I need to push t to go to infinity. Whenever this limit exists, this integral is convergent. Whenever this one does not exist, this integral is divergent. So how to investigate whether this integral is convergent or divergent, or in other words, what are the values of p that will make this one convergent? That's what we need to do now. Okay. Remembering how to integrate such type of integrals, you can easily see that we need to divide the question into two parts. The first one, you know the formula for integrating x to the n, isn't it? If this n is not equal to minus 1, then we add 1 and divide by the new exponent. But if this is equal to minus 1, then we have the integral of 1 over x dx, that is in terms of logarithmic function, okay? So what we need to do now, we consider two cases. The first case, we see what will happen if we have, so case number one, okay, let me write it this way. Case number one, the first case is this. So we say case number one, what's happening if our P here is exactly equal to one? If our P is exactly equal to one, so what do we have is this. We have the integral from one to infinity, 1 over x dx, and you can show that this is divergent. Why? This is our first example with that in the improper integral. The integral from 1 to infinity, we did two examples, 1 over x squared, convergent, 1 over x dx, divergent. Simply, what you need to do is, okay, let us do the calculation again. It's not bad. So let us say this is t goes to infinity, and this is 1 to t, 1 over x dx, and clearly this will be equal to the limit as t goes to infinity. So we are solving the question independently of the second example we did, and that is ln of x evaluated from 1 to t. Again, this is equal to the limit as t goes to infinity, and that is ln of t. Minus ln of 1, which is 0, and this is infinite, so we say the integral is divergent, okay? So, for P to be one, the integral is what? The integral is, is divergent. Okay, fine. Now, what's happening if P is not equal to one? If P is not equal to one. So, second case now. Case number two. What happened if P is not equal to one? Okay, so we have one over x to the power B or x to the power minus P. Okay, let us do the definition. Apply the definition and see what will be gain if this P is not equal to one. Okay, now, Let's just take a partition here. Now, what will be the question? It will be 1 to infinity, and we have 1 over x to the power p dx, and this will be defined like this. Limit as t goes to infinity, okay? This is 1 to t. Now, if you allow me 1 over x to the power b, I will write it as x to the power minus b dx. What is the integral of x to the power minus p? By using the formulas we have, this is simple one. The limit as t goes to infinity. What is this? It will be x to the power minus p plus 1 all over minus p plus 1 or 1 minus p. Doesn't make a difference. Minus p plus 1 evaluated from 1 to t. Okay. Interesting. Let us calculate and see. Limit as t goes to infinity. Now, if I replace by t, this is what I will get. I will get uh, x to the power, sorry, I'm replacing x by t, so what I will get is this. It is t to the power, if you allow me, I will write this one as 1 minus p, the same, okay? And this is also 1 minus p, minus. At 1, we have 1 over 1 minus p. This is the expression after evaluating. The question now when this limit exists. Because once we answer this question, it means we are answering the question when the integral is convergent. When the limit does not exist, it means we are answering when the integral is 
divergent. So let us see. Okay. For the second part, we have no problem. Why? Because P is not equal to 1. So at the end of the day, this is a finite number. It is a finite constant here. So we have no problem here. What about this? We are letting T to go to infinity. So we have infinity to the power something here. Okay. If we allow, if we allow this exponent to be positive, then this will show to infinity. Okay, it depends, of course, if this is positive, it will go to infinity. If this is negative, it will go to minus infinity. But this will be finite only if we can make this one to be negative. Otherwise, this limit will not be finite. It will not exist. Okay, again, I repeat this. If you have infinity, let us formally say this, to a power, to the power something here. Let us say to a, a real number here. Not equal to zero. If this number is positive, this will go to infinity. But if this one is negative, this will be 1 over infinity, so it goes to what? To 0. So, I conclude now to say that this limit exists, this limit. Only if it, it will be there only if it will be a finite number only if if this one is negative otherwise as we said we have what we have infinity i repeat this one again if t goes to infinity this goes to infinity infinity to a positive number will go to infinity but in that case we say the limit does not exist so the integral is divergent if this goes to infinity this is infinity if this one is negative this goes to zero. So the final answer will convert to this quantity, which is finite. So in that case, we have. So I would say this limit exists. Let me say just simply exists only if this limit exists only if 1 minus b to be less than 0. Otherwise, as we said, it will go to infinity. OK, so this implies b supposed to be greater than 1. What's happening if this is greater than 0 or p is less than 1? Again, we have divergence. So what can we say about the integral? Now, what is the summary of this? This implies, OK, before I go to the conclusion, I jump to the conclusion. Let me say this limit exists only if this one. Otherwise, Meaning, p is less than 1, or 1 minus b greater than 1, okay, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Does not exist. Okay? Does not exist. So, the conclusion now, our integral, so, summary now, this is a, a very interesting now result. So, the integral... Actually, it is the improper integral 1 over x to the power p dx from 1 to infinity. This one is convergent if the value of p is strictly greater than 1 and it is divergent if this value of p is less than or equal to 1, okay? And this will be a very interesting uh, test we will use in, in series. We call it, I mean, it will make the connection between integral test in series and the improper integral. Then we call it the P-series test later to investigate the convergence and divergence of a special type of series. We call them P-series. Okay, what is next? Now we discuss the first type of improper integral where we have either the lower limit is minus infinity, the upper limit is infinity, or both limits, one of them is minus infinity, the other one is infinity. Okay, what is next is to discuss the second type of improper integral where the problem will be on the function. The function has infinite discontinuity in between A and P. That will be our next discussion.
Okay, now after we discuss the first part of improper integral where we have a problem in the interval where we said either a is minus infinity, b is infinity, or both of them minus infinity and infinity, we have the second type of improper integral. Okay, what is the second type of improper integral if we have the integrand is discontinuous? Okay, we have defined before the improper integral, we said we have a definite integral a to b f of x dx, and we said either we have problem in the interval which is infinite or this integrand has infinite discontinuity. So if this function f of x is not continuous between a and b, we have the second type of improper integral. Now we will split it into three types. The first one says if you have f of x is continuous on the whole interval a, b, but not continuous at a, it has infinite discontinuity at x equal to a, then how to define the integral? As usual, we have to remove the single point or the problem here we have at a, so we remove the point a and we insert t, then we study the new integral now, this t is greater than a, so we have no problem here, this function is continuous now between t and b, so we can use whatever we had before as fundamental theorem calculus to calculate, then we push this t to go to what? To go to a. If this limit exists, then we say this integral is convergent. If the limit does not exist, we say the integral is divergent. So the equality here will be hold if the limit what exists. Okay. The second one, if f is continuous in the whole interval, but not at the last point here, the upper limit here. At b, we have infinite discontinuity for the integrand f of x. So what do you need to do? Again, we remove b, we insert t, another parameter here. Then we study the integral of this function f of x, which is continuous now between a and t. And then we study the case where t is pushed to b from the left. Okay? So if the limit again exists, we say this integral is convergent. If the limit does not exist, we say this integral is divergent. And the last uh, case we have, if we have the continuities appearing in between A and B, strictly greater than A, less than B. In that case, what we need to do is simply to split the integral into two integrals, A to C, C to B. So this is of the first type, and this is of the second type. Now, if both these two integrals are convergent, we say this integral is convergent, and the value is equal to the sum of the values. If one of these two integrals is divergent, it is enough to say this integral is divergence. Okay, let us see how to apply these definitions in some specific examples. So we will start with this simple exercise here we have. It says evaluate, evaluate the integral from 2 to 5, 1 over radical x minus 2 dx. Okay, so what should we do? First of all, we need to see that for this function f of x, which is the integrand, 1 over radical x minus 2, it's clear that at x equal to 2, we have a problem here. As x goes to 2, this would show to infinity. If x approaching 2 from the right, this will go to infinity. So the function here, this function is not continuous, not continuous at x equal to 2. So what does it mean here if x is not continuous, if f of x is not continuous at x equal to 2? It means this is an improper integral. So we cannot calculate directly. We cannot calculate by the previous techniques we did based on the fundamental theorem of calculus. Meaning, it is not enough to find an antiderivative for this and substitute at the end point minus the substitution at the first point. So what should we do then? Okay, we have the problem at 2. So the first step, we need to remove the 2 and insert t here. Instead of 2, I'm putting t to 5. Okay, and I have the integrand is x minus 2 to the power minus 1 half dx. What I need to do is to calculate everything here. I will get an expression in terms of t. Then I need to study the limit as t as t approaching the number 2 from the right. That's the classical way we do. So what is next now? I integrate because now we have everything is fine. This function is continuous from t to 5 because t here is greater than 2. So what do we have is just x minus 2 all to the power 1 half multiplied by 2. And we need to evaluate this one from t to what? t to 5. Fine. When I substitute 5 here, I get 2. This will be 5 minus 2. That is 3. So this is only radical of 3. 
minus substituting t here we get two radical of t minus two okay we now we come to this expression and we need to study the limit as t approaching two from the right so what is the limit now what is the limit as t approaching two from the right of the expression we have which is t two five and that is one over if you like radical of whatever we have here x minus 2 dx what is it equal to it's equal to the limit as t approaching 2 from the right of this expression we have here which is 2 radical 3 minus 2 radical of t minus 2 okay fine what is the final answer for this as t approaching 2 from the right t approaching 2 from the right it means this goes to what this goes to 0 2 minus 2 so simply the final answer is 2 radical 3. That's the final answer. So what does it mean now? The limit is equal to 2 radical 3. It means that this integral is convergent. And the value of it is equal to what? 2 radical 3. So I can write the conclusion here. So this is convergent with the following answer. That is the integral of 2 to 5. 1 over radical of x minus 2 dx. This is nothing but 2 radical 3. Sometimes we say it is convergent to 2 radical 3. Or we say it is convergent and its value is 2 radical 3. So this is one example about the first case where we have the discontinuous point at the beginning here, at the lower limit. So the function here is not continuous at 2, which is the lower limit. So what do you need to do? We remove the 2. And then we study the limit as t approaching 2 for the new integral here. If the limit exists as it is appearing here, we say the original integral is convergent. Otherwise, we say the integral is divergent. More examples will be done now. Now, let us see more examples about these cases. For example, here the question says, determine whether the integral from 0 to pi over 2 secant of x dx convergence or divergence. Okay, what should we need to observe at the beginning we have the secant function which is one over cosine if you like one over cosine the cosine function had a zero at pi over two so we have singularity point at pi over two so the first thing we need to write that note that f of x here which is equal to secant of x this is clearly this one is not continuous actually it has infinite discontinuity not continuous at x equal to what? At the upper limit here, which is x equal to pi over 2. Okay, what should we do then if we have this continuous point at x equal to pi over 2? This continuity at the upper limit, what you need to do is just to remove the singularity point. So we have 0 here. We remove the point of this continuity here. We just insert t instead. And then we have to integrate secant of x dx, okay? And after that, we take the limit of this as t approaching what? Pi over 2 from the left. So we consider this one first. So consider this. Consider this integral. We need to evaluate this. How to evaluate 0 to 3 secant of x dx? How to integrate secant of x dx? We did this one before. One of the famous formulas we have for the integral of secant of x, secant of x dx, that is equal to ln of absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x. That's exactly what we have in the formula, and we need to evaluate this one from 0 to t. Okay, evaluating this will give me the following. It is ln of absolute value, replacing x by t, so we have secant of t plus tangent of t, minus ln of, if you substitute 0, tangent 0 will be 0, secant 0 will be equal to 1, so what do we have here is ln of 1, but ln of 1 is equal to what? Is equal to 0. Okay. We just do the expression 0 to 3 secant of x dx, and we, we obtain the following. Ln of secant t tangent of t. Now, what do we need to do? We need to take the limit now as t approaching pi over 2. Of course, we cannot approach it from the right. We will approach it from the left. We are in the interval 0 to pi over 2. This is exactly what we did. Here we have a discontinuous point, pi over 2. This is a discontinuous point. Here we have a continuity up to here. What we did, we removed this one and we insert here t. 
And then what we did, we need to study now what happened if t is pushed to pi over 2. So of course, we need to take the limit as t goes to pi over 2 from the left. OK. What is the result here? If we take t goes to pi over 2 from the left of the expression here, ln of absolute value. OK. What I will do for this, because you know, this is secant 1 over cosine, and this is tangent sine over cosine. So I will write this one as 1 over cosine of t plus this is sine of t divided by cosine of t. Okay. Now what happened as t goes to pi over 2 from the left? Of course, this will go to 0. So 1 over 0 from the positive side, approaching 0 from the positive side, this will go to infinity. And again, this will go to 1. And cosine goes to 0 from the right, so this is going to infinity. So what do we have here is like this expression is going to infinity. The ex other expression is going to infinity. And ln of infinity is infinity. So this limit is equal to what? Is equal to positive infinity. OK, fine. If the limit is equal to infinity, it means the limit does not exist. So what can we say about this integral? So this implies since the limit as t goes to pi over 2 from the left of the integral from 0 to t, f of x, which is in this case secant of x dx, this is not, does not exist or equal to infinity, if you like. If this is equal to infinity, this implies the integral from 0 to pi over 2, okay, secant of x dx is what we call divergent. Because we said in order to say the integral is convergent, the value of the limit should be a real number, finite real number. In that case, we say the limit exists. If it is infinity or does not exist, in both cases, we say the limit does not exist and the integral in that case is divergent. Okay. More examples only about the cases we have. So another example here, which is of interest, is the next one here, example. That says evaluate evaluate the integral from 0 to 3 dx over x minus 1 if possible, if possible, okay? If it is possible, evaluate, otherwise, then we say the integral is divergent. If possible, it means if it is convergent, evaluate. If it is not convergent, we say it is divergent. Okay, what is so interest, interesting about this example is the following. I just give a warning here. Do not do the following. Do not do this. I let me write it down. Do not do this. What is that? Maybe, what is this? Maybe someone will come and say, okay, you need to integrate this. So that is so simple integral. I have from zero to three dx over x minus 1, and maybe he will not notice that we have a point of discontinuity in between 0 and 3. So what he will do, he will say, okay, the integral of this is just ln of absolute value of x minus 1, integrating from 0 to 3. So what do we get here is, what do we get here is 3 minus 1, that's equal to 2. At 0, this is equal to 1, ln of 1 is 0, so the final answer is ln of 2. And this is completely wrong. This is not correct. Why? Because when we move from this step to this step, we are using basically the fundamental theorem of calculus. And the fundamental theorem of calculus needs the integrand here to be what? To be continuous over the closed interval 0 to 3. So we are using something that we cannot use. So what should we do then? In this case, we need to figure out that this function has a point of discontinuity between 0 and 3, namely, it is x equal to 1. And in that case, we need to use the definition of improper integral. So instead, so what should we do then if we do not do that solution, which is, of course, a totally wrong solution. It is based on the argument, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it is not available because we don't have continuity. What should we do? What should we do? We need to figure out first that this function f of x equal to 1 over x minus 1. This function is not 
continuous at x equal to 1. That's the first need, the first thing we need to observe, that we have an infinite discontinuity at x equal to 1. So what should we do according to the definition we wrote? In that case, it says, okay, 0 to 3, dx over x minus 1, try to rewrite it as the integral from 0 to 1, dx over x minus 1, where we have problem at the end point, plus the integral from 1 to 3, dx over x minus 1. Okay, so here we have the problem only at the end point. Here we have the problem at the, okay, first point. Otherwise, in between, we have no problem with continuity. This function is continuous for all values between 0 and 1 open, 0 close. And here we have no problem. This is continuous for all values greater than 1, less than or equal to 3. So we can use the first definition or the second definition, but we should be careful here. In order to say that this is convergent, we need both of these integrals to be convergent. So what should we do? We study the first case if it happened to be divergent enough to say this is divergent. Assume this is convergent, we need to go to the second one and study it also. If it is convergent, then we say that since both of them are convergent, the first one is convergent, and the value of it is the sum of the two values. So what should we do now? We investigate the convergence of the first integral and the second integral separately. So that's what I will do now in the following step. So I will consider now the first integral. Consider the first integral, which is 0 to 1 dx over x minus 1. Okay. So what I will do now, I will remove the point of this continuity, which is x equal to 1. I will study this limit, limit as t approaching 1 from the right, sorry, from the left, because I cannot approach from the right. So 1 to the left, from the left, because we are less than 1. I will remove that point, and I insert here t, and this is dx over x minus 1. Now, look carefully for this t approaching 1 from the left, it means t is less than 1. So this function is perfectly all right there. It is continuous. Everything is fine. So I can integrate directly and say this is equal to limit as t approaching 1 from the left. And what is the integral here is ln of absolute value x minus 1. Okay. And this is evaluated from 0 to t. Of course, I'm talking about uh, some positive interval here, so this is what I have, and this is equal to. Okay. Now, what is the limit of this? Let me replace t, x by t first, and then by 0. At 0, this is 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. Absolute value will give me 1. Ln of 1 is 0. So simply what do we have here is limit as t approaching 1 from the left, ln of absolute value of t minus 1. Fine. Which is equal to. Look. If t approaching 1 from the left, this quantity approaching 0, because of the absolute value here, 1 from the left less than 1, so this approach 0 from the left. But because of the absolute value here, and that is very important here, this quantity, absolute value of t minus 1, will approach 0 from the right. And you have logarithmic function. Look. You have logarithmic function like this. Okay, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, something like this. And then we have y equal to ln of x. As you approach 0 from the right, the function goes to what? Minus infinity. It goes to minus infinity. So this quantity approaching 0 from the right, the logarithmic function will approach minus infinity. Fine. If this limit is equal to minus infinity, what can we say about this integral? We say this integral is divergent. And since this integral is divergent, which is part of these two integrals, then we say this integral is divergence. So the conclusion now will be the following. This implies the integral from 0 to 1, and that is dx over x minus 1, is divergent. And since it is divergent, this implies the original integral also, and this implies the integral from what do we have here is 0 to 3 dx over x minus 1 is also what is also divergent.
Because we said if one of these two integrals happen to be divergent, then the original integral is divergent. Okay, let's come to another exercise about these kind of uh, integrals. So I will talk about another one where we have this continuous points in between, but still the integral is convergent. That will be done in the following exercise. Okay, now let us see this exercise that says evaluate the integral from 0 to 2, 1 over 2x minus 1 to the power 2 over 3 dx. Again, we can see that this function f of x, which is equal to 1 over 2x minus 1, and of course this is to the power 2 over 3, this is not continuous, this is not continuous, okay, continuous at x equal to what? Equal to 1 half. You see, at x equal to 1 half, we have singularity point here, so this function will shoot up, up to what? Infinity or minus infinity. Of course, if we approach 2 from the right, then this will go to infinity. So at the end, we have the function has infinite discontinuity at x equal to 2, so this function is not continuous, so this integral is called improper integral. What should we do? We need to split this integral into two integrals, this is 1 over 2x minus 1 to the power uh, 2 over 3 dx. We need to rewrite it as the summation of two integrals. The first one from 0 to 1 half. Okay, 1 over x minus 1 or 2x minus 1 all to the power 2 over 3 dx plus another integral from 1 half to the second point here is 2. And that is 1 over whatever we have here, 2x minus 1 all to the power 2 over 3 dx. Now, we need to investigate again the convergence of the first integral as well as the second integral. If both integrals converge, then, if both of them converge, then the original integral is convergent and the sum is equal to what? The sum of the values. If not, we say it is divergent. So let us take each one separately and try to see if it is convergent or not convergent. This is what we have for the exercise. So we start with the first one. So let me consider first the first integral. Let me call it i1, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 half. I will take the first part here. And if you allow me, I will write this one as 2x minus 1 to the power minus 2 over 3 dx. Now, what I did, I take the first part. So what we have here is a function which is continuous everywhere between 0 and 1 over 2, except at x equal to 1 over 2, which is the upper limit here. So what should we do? We need to discuss the limit as t approaching 1 half from the left. We remove the 1 half, we put 0 to t, and what do we have here is 2x minus 1 to the power minus 2 over 3 dx. Now, we can use fundamental theorem calculus to calculate this because everything is fine now. What we did here is this. We have 0. We have 1 half. What we did, we removed the 1 half. We put t. And then we need to study what's happening if this t is pushed to 1 half from the left. That's exactly what is the meaning of this statement here. So let's just discuss the limit now. Limit as t goes to 1 half from the left. I need to evaluate the limit here. So that is... Of course, when I need to differentiate, uh, integrate, I need the derivative of 2x minus 1, which is 2. So I have 1 half times the derivative now, which is 2x minus 1, all to the power, adding 1 to minus 2 over 3. So that is 1 over 3, and divided by the new exponent, so it's multiplying by 3, so this will be 3 over 2. I need to evaluate this one from 0 to t. Okay, fine. What is it equal to? I will take the constant outside, though that's 3 over 2. The limit as t goes to 1 half from the left. Substituting t, I have 2t minus 1 all to the power 1 third minus, at 0 this is 0, minus 1 to the power 1 third is minus 1, so this will be what? This will be plus 1 at the end. Okay, fine. So, so I'm substituting at t equal to, uh, at x, at, by, by x, uh, by t, I am substituting at x equal to t, so this will be 2t minus 1 or the power 1 third, minus in the formula, and once I substitute 0, I get minus sign, so this will be plus 1. Okay, what is the final answer now? 
if you substitute uh, t by one half or letting t goes to one half then this quantity goes to zero so we have one times three over two so the final answer is three over two now what can we say about i1 i1 is convergent to the value three over two or we say i1 is convergent and its value is equal to three over two so i would say simply i1 is convergent and its value is equal to let us say here 3 over 2 okay fine can we conclude that this integral is convergent not yet we did the first part we need to go and investigate about the second part now so we take the second part and try to find the value if it is there I mean if the integral is convergent assume we get the second part is divergent we will stop and say that this one is divergent if the second part is also convergent then this one is convergent and the value of it is the sum of the two values okay now sit uh, or let me give some name for the second one i2 which is equal to the second part now which is one half to two and I have 1 over, this is 2x minus 1, all to the power 2 over 3dx. Okay, fine. Looking for this integrand, we have this continuity only at the lower point here, 1 half. So what should we do? We need to discuss the limit as t approaching 1 half from the right. So we come to the point here. This is 2. And this is one half. We are putting here t and then study the integral and push t to go to one half from the right. So that's exactly what I will write now. So I will remove the one half to put t here by definition. And then I have two and I have two x minus one all to the power minus two over three dx. Okay, fine. Let's evaluate this integral and take the limit then. This is t goes to one half from the right. Now, what is the value of this? Again, I need two here to integrate directly. So I will divide by two. Simply, I multiply it by two and divide by two. So I have the function and it's a derivative. So I can integrate to get to get the two x minus one. And this is minus two over three plus one. That is one third divided by one third. So I'm multiplying by three here. Okay. And then don't forget the limits from t to 2. Now let us say substitute. Again, I will take the 3 over 2 outside and then the limit as t goes to 1 half from the right. Substituting 2, I have 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1, that is 3. So I have cubic root of 3 minus a t, this is 2t minus 1. Okay, again, this is a cubic root of 2t minus 1. Everything here is inside the limit. So what is the final answer? As t goes to 1 half from the right, this quantity goes to 0. So this is what is left multiplied by 3 over 2. So the final answer is 3 cubic root of 3 divided by 2. Fine. So what does it mean here? I2 is convergent because the limit exists. This implies I2 is convergent. Let me say convergent to the value here, which is 3 cubic root of 3 over 2. So what is the conclusion now? We have i is equal to i1. This is i1, we call it. And this is i2. And we found that i1 is convergent, i2 is convergent. So by definition of improper integral for this specific case, it says also this one is Convergent. Not only convergent, it is convergent and the value of it is the sum of these two values. So let me write the conclusion now. Okay. The conclusion now we will say since I1 and I2 are convergent. This implies i itself, which is equal to the original integral, which is 0 to 2, 0 to 2, 1 over 
this is 2x minus 1 all to the power whatever we have here 2 over 3 dx this one is what if i1 and i2 are convergent this implies this one is also what convergent okay that's what we have here not only this and i is equal to i1 plus i2 i mean the value of it is equal to we get we get i1 to be 3 over 2 and the second one we obtained it to be 3 cubic root of 3 divided by 2 so finally we have this 3 plus 3 cubic root of 3 divided by 2 okay let us summarize now the cases we have we said if we have a definite integral then we we have two types of improper integral either the interval itself is infinite so we have a is minus infinity b is infinity or minus infinity and infinity the second type of improper integral if the integrand itself itself has discontinuous points in between a and b so the discontinuous point could appear at the beginning at a or at b or in between a and b and each one of them has a special treatment where we said either the integral at the end will be convergent or divergent so simply we are discussing a limit case for the integrand of improper time that is the summary of what we did in improper integral okay